Okay, so today in Bookland, I've got a joke for you. An 18th century Italian artist, a 19th century uh, writing format, and a fantasy author all walk into a bar. Piranesi. Get it? Get it? Piranesi. Piranesi. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite get it yet either myself. Okay, today on Instead of Writing, we are talking about Susanna Clarke's recent release, Piranesi, which I cannot say without, without falling into some type of Italian pronunciation. Piranesi. Chi è Piranesi? Eh, guarda, è questo artista. Eh, fa questi quadri che veramente ti fanno avere un incubo. Forse tanti incubi. Let's talk quick hits. Quick hits about the book. Author, Susanna Clark. You may know her from her other smash hit and possibly my favorite Gaslamp fantasy novel, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Wonderful. Wonderful book. Piranesi was published by Bloomsbury Publishing. Bloomsbury. So, good on you, Bloomsbury. The genre is not the same as her most famous work. It's paranormal. It's, um, I would say, in some ways, urban fantasy. It does seem to take place in a more contemporary time period, although that is a little bit uh, murky. But it is certainly not a traditional gas lamp like Jonathan Strange was, so beware. But first off, who is Piranesi? Well, he's an Italian artist from the 18th century, Giovanni Battista Piranesi. He was famous for these kind of beautiful, but also frightening and sometimes paradoxical uh, drawings and illustrations. I mean, you gotta see some of these. They had like vague suggestions of wheels. They had never ending stairwells that just, they just kind of meandered around. He used a lot of porticos. He liked porticos, dark walls, tunnels. His art gives a sense of vastness and almost like, like you're lost somewhere. If you want nightmares, go spend an hour looking at his Carceri series because it is basically, carcere is the, is the Italian word for jails or prisons. You know, it certainly gives you a sense of, wow, if I got stuck in one of these paintings, it would feel terrible. So is this book about this artist? No, no it is not, absolutely not. Although you certainly get the feeling that maybe this setting was inspired by some of the works of Giovanni Battista Piranesi. And in fact, Piranesi is the name of the main character. Piranesi follows the story of a guy who lives in a labyrinth. This labyrinth has thousands of rooms and corridors and statues. I used to dream of living in a corridor. If you got that reference, 10 points to you. And all of them are very distinct and unique. No single room's the same, no statue's the same, no corridor's exactly the same. It's just, it's this never ending thing. There's an ocean trapped somehow in this labyrinth, in this giant house. He lives in this place with one other human being, a person he calls the other because he doesn't really have another name for them. He and the other search the labyrinth in order to try and find this great power that the other believes exists somewhere inside. But the main character, Piranesi, really just loves the labyrinth. He lives to explore the house. But as they go out searching, they find evidence that there might be another human being in existence. And as that comes to light, so do strands of a sinister plot that threaten his very existence. Ooh. Now imagine yourself trapped in one of Giovanni Battista Piranesi's illustrations, and then someone's trying to get you. Ooh, no thanks, no thanks. Oh, sorry, I just, I went there and thought about that for a little while. So here are my quick five things you should probably know before you dive into the book, okay? These are not spoilers, they're just general things about the book. So if you are one of those spoilers people, you don't have to panic and, and smash the, the thumbs down button. We're not going there, okay? Number one. As I mentioned before, the genre is quite different from Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Uh, if you were hoping for the same thing, there's lots of other books that I could recommend to you. It's not necessarily this one, but you will, you might enjoy this genre as well. Number two, the book is relatively short, actually. Uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, I mean, you, you find that it's like, it's practically the Old Testament and the New Testament. And, you know, it's a thick one. Uh, this one is not that way. It almost feels like a novella. It's almost that short. The plus side is it's a quick read, and it's the type of read that you may want to uh, go in twice, because there's a lot there that, almost like Inception or The Prestige, 
uh, where you might want to go back and rehash some things out. Number three. This is the 19th century writing format that I hinted at earlier. The entire book is written in um, journal entry format, which uh, is a very intimate point of view. I think as a literary voice, you get a lot of cool, you know, inner monologue thoughts. It's not as immediate as like a, um, as a Hunger Games or a Pierce Brown where it's first person present tense. It's this first person past tense, but it's also, in theory, only the stuff that the main character thought merited entries into the journal. So I think for that reason, it's an efficient form of storytelling, um, and you could do a lot of cool stuff with it as an author. I know Susanna Clarke certainly does in this book. It leaves you wondering what's been left out and did you miss something? Number four, although it's a different genre than Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, this book is still chocked full of Susanna Clarke's literary whimsy, okay? From the setting, which we've already, we've already talked about, to the interactions that the main character has with the other, to the way that Piranesi explores the house, but even down to the very personality of Piranesi. It's full of that quirky, whimsical view on reality. You know, when you're reading the book, it still comes a across as distinctly Clark, which I really appreciated because that was one of my favorite elements of her previous work. I did not want to lose that literary voice entirely just because we were in a different time and place and character. Number five. As you might have expected, if you're familiar at all with the works of Giovanni Battista Piranesi. Giovanni Battista Piranesi. This book is going to explore some dark corners of humanity. Um, and it does so in subtle ways and not so subtle ways. Again, this is not a spoiler thing, but I think even from the description of the book, you might anticipate that uh, we're going to dive into themes of isolation, themes of loneliness, and explore this question of what we cling to when we have nothing else, and how hard it is sometimes to uncling yourself. Uncling yourself? Really? Publishing this to the whole world? I uncling yourself is the best I've got. Let go if you speak English. English, I'm done. Turn off the video camera. This is my way of dealing with a vulnerable topic. I just, I make light of my own imperfections. When I finished the book, at least, I felt unsettled for some time. And I think that's how I was supposed to feel. So Susanna, if you are watching this, you just shoot me a private message or something with a thumbs up if I'm right. But I left certainly feeling almost like, wow, that was, a little chilling. I do recommend the book. It's worth a read and it's worth pondering. I think she is trying to say something to us here and it's an important message, especially um, in the climate of 2020. If you're watching this next year, hopefully you've forgotten all about 2020. Okay, that's all I've got time for today. I'm going to uh, get back to writing my book. The third book in the Luella Winthrop trilogy. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you read Piranesi, if you had some strong opinions about it, let me know. We can hash it out down there. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, keep reading. Keep enjoying stories. Keep enjoying your life.